Konstantin of Kislev. The man with one of the hardest campaigns in Warhammer 3. I'm going to speedily take you through the first part of this campaign to get you set up to win it. So let's get moving. Right out the gate, it's straight to war, attacking this first army that we come across. This is a pretty easy little fight. You'll want to fight it because, of course, the auto-resolve will screw you over and make you lose more than you really want to right now. And that's just going to slow you down. So fight this battle to minimize the damage. Use your bear and Costalton and your cav just to disrupt those missiles. Don't let their missiles start firing at all. Then line yours up and just let them gun everything down. Although try not to get your Costalton beaten up by their lord like I did. Once that's done, do their wives, drink their blood, do whatever you need to do. You should get a Patriarch at this point. Whack him in your army and start to recruit a couple of units as well. Either Cossars will do. And make sure you're stood near the border of the next province. Then take the military building and upgrade it so we can get armoured Cossars soon. We can also do the technology. I'm just going to go with the growth nice and early. And then just check your diplomacy before you go as well, just to see if there's anything you can do. And in this case, there should be a little pact you can get with Nordland. That'll start you going so you can get a trade agreement with them and maybe even an alliance. The first goal here, as always, is to take the first province. We've got one settlement. We're going to look to take these three. That's the first part of our master plan here. So just trying to get that done as quickly as possible so we can move on and get all of this done before the first rift opening. Now we move on to the next settlement, Labia, or Level, yeah, whichever you prefer. This is going to lead us to one of many minor settlement battles that you're going to have to churn through. These battles aren't too hard though, you just need to make the most of your missiles. One little tactic you can pull is to put your cavalry over on the other side where you're not really going to attack. These two units can just sit over here and it'll probably draw some units to be put over this side, which means it'll be less for your main army to fight. In this case, we completely outgun the enemy, so we're just going to move up, sit in front of them and gun them all down. Be sure to shoot down any towers that you can as well, just to prevent the damage from being done to your army. And just gradually creep your boys up, shooting down everything as you go. You can push through all your single entities if you like. The bear, Costalton, you can try and take that point just so they can't keep putting barricades and towers up. And eventually you should be able to get through the enemy just wearing them down until they're all given up, without taking too much damage yourself. Once we've got that done, we've claimed our first settlement, of course, occupy it. Hopefully your army will still be in decent shape so we can keep on moving and keep on rolling. Upgrade this settlement as soon as you can. We've got a whole lot of stuff to start building, so good to get the settlements upgraded as soon as possible. Now we're going to move straight on to the next settlement when we can. We're going to recruit a few more units though first. We want to get our army nice and large for the upcoming tasks. On the next turn, we're going to move up to the border where we can recruit a couple more units and now we should be able to get some armoured Cossars. We're going to get a couple of those which we can just about afford. And that should give us a fairly sturdy army to finish off this province with. Now what you're probably going to find when you end this turn and you move on is that the enemy army that owns the settlement we're about to attack is going to come back and occupy the settlement, making it very difficult to try and take in a head-on assault. So what we're going to do is just run straight past them and forget about that settlement for now. We're going to head towards Fort Stragov. We're going to force march, not worrying about whether they're going to attack us because they probably won't. And even if they do, we'll still be fine. We've got the much bigger army, even tired in force march. So now we've forced the enemy to make a choice, stay there and defend or move back to Fort Stragov. As we can see, they made their choice. And now this settlement that I need to take is freed up for a nice easy pickings. But again, a Pyrrhic victory isn't ideal here, so we've got to fight this one. Same again as we did before. Try not to let their missiles start firing too much. Try to gun them all down with your missiles. Get into melee with your Cossars if you have to. The main aim here is to try not to lose too many troops so that your army can keep rolling on and attacking the next settlement. So at this point, we have three of the four settlements we need to complete our first province. Keep upgrading all your stuff as well and start building the orthodoxy shrines as soon as you can because we want to upgrade those to tier 3 as quickly as possible so that we can start getting those supporters and winning the race against Katarin. Now when it comes to taking this final settlement, it can be a little bit more fiddly. It depends if you get lucky with where their big army goes. The key here though is probably ambush. So I'm going to move near the border and go into ambush so that the enemy doesn't know I'm here. And what this is going to do is make sure that this big army doesn't come back and defend that Fort Strakhoff settlement. So I should be able to take it on the next turn. In this case, we're going to get lucky and they're not going to find us. And we are able to attack Fort Strakhoff with the advantage. But we've got to fight it again. Guess what? Same old tactics as before. Don't let them shoot you and just shoot them instead. Simple. If the enemy's large army is still at this settlement though, still stick with the ambush and you might be able to get them to run into you when they go to try to attack the settlement you just took off them. But for now, we've got Fort Stragov, and there we go, our first province is down. That's the first part of the plan executed, and honestly, that was the easy bit. And now things will get a little bit more unpredictable, but we're going to chill out for a few turns now, 
replenish our troops, maybe get rid of some troops so that you can save a bit of money, start upgrading all your buildings as well. Now, you may end up with the problem like I do of having this enemy big army still running around, but it should be taking some attrition from not having any settlements. But to be honest, even if it does attack one of your settlements, they'll probably still be fine. You can bring Kostelton back and sort that army out if you want to. But now what we're going to do is use our Patriarch to go and do some scouting for our next target, which is going to be the Druzina. That's right, we're going to attack this other Kislev faction. Generally a no-no, right, because you lose all the devotion. But we need their lands, and they have Eringrad, and we want that shit. And they've also got another province which we can have, so by the end of this, we're going to have three full provinces. So that's the next step in our master plan. We need to eliminate the Druzina. Because quite simply, we don't have the time. That's the problem with this campaign. You get a lot of people attacking you from many angles. You need to get a solid land and solid foundations quickly so that you can have the best chance of surviving. And we can't sit around waiting for diplomacy with them, so we got to take them out. Now, another key part of this campaign strategy is to build a palisade in every single settlement in the Troll Country province because we simply don't have the armies to defend it. And we're going to get attacked by Norska later. We're going to get attacked by Demons of Chaos. We need the palisades to put garrisons in all of our settlements because those are basically free armies. And Lord knows we can't afford a second army in the Costalton campaign, at least not yet. And we're going to get attacked by the remaining Ungol army, but it's no bother. Now we're going to start to move down south after a couple of turns of rest and we're going to start to get ready to attack Erengrad. This is the first place that we want to take off the Druzina, preferably because it's right at the south so we can work our way up after we take this one rather than having to come back down and take it. And also because it's a tier 5 city. All the troll country settlements are only tier 3 so Kostalton really needs this. So recruit yourself a nice big army even if it's only mostly Kossars. I do have some armoured Kossars here as well. But the key to winning these kind of big siege settlements is that it's better to try and take the victory objective and win that way rather than trying to grind through the entirety of the enemy army. So all I've done here is send my big old elemental bear to their victory objective. He's going to take it pretty much by himself. The enemy's brought one or two units back to try and stop me, but they're not enough. So we're going to take that and just defend it as much as we can. And then all we've got to do is wait for a minute or two. That'll be captured and then we'll win the battle. So the bear won it for us, but the rest of the army was playing a crucial role in just distracting all the enemy units. That allowed us to attack the victory objective. We can then occupy Eringrad, and that is a strong start in our war with the Druzina. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit unpredictable here. The Druzina tend to have one big army somewhere in their provinces. Sometimes it might be down this end, sometimes it might be more up north. That's why you want to use your Patriarch to scout around and try to find it just to make sure you know where it is. And eventually you might get lucky. I've had a Chaos incursion here, which isn't a big deal. They're never really that dangerous. But I've got lucky here and I found the Forced March enemy army that is a full stack that is coming back for Erengrad. But I'm going to jump on them with my fully replenished nice big army here and take this one out. I'm going to water resolve it because it's probably going to have a better result than if I try to fight it because they got a lot of missiles to try and disrupt. But that's the goal here. You've got to try and take out this big Druzina army and then it kind of clears the way for you to take them out. But there's many different ways on how you might run into them so it might not be anything like this. But just know that you have to take them out some way. Try and use ambush stances, whatever you need to do. And then you can move on to start taking the settlements. Zoyshenk here. We could actually win this one with auto resolve, but we're not in any hurry now, not a desperate hurry. They might recruit another army if we take too long, but we can take a couple of turns just to wear them down with encircling here, or ideally we can draw them out of the settlement. That's what we're trying to do really, but they probably won't. So now all we need to do is just move through taking these settlements by whatever means necessary. Now another thing to be wary of is the Demons of Chaos. They will likely come and attack Castle Alexandrinov, and you need to be ready for that, which is why I said build a palisade in every single one of these settlements. If you don't have a palisade there, you're probably going to lose it. So make sure you put one there. We also have this Chaos Incursion army attacking us. As I say, it wasn't a big deal. As you can see, we just sort of resolved the garrison took it out. That is one of the unfortunate downsides of us attacking the Druzina is that we lose 100 devotion, which does make us vulnerable to those incursions. But as I say, they're not a huge deal. Now I'm gonna keep wearing out this garrison. I'm gonna take one more turn just to wear them down that little bit farther. And then on the next turn, we will go for the attack. I could auto-resolve, but we'll lose a few units, so we'll just goddamn fight it. You know how that one goes. You know how to win it at this point. We can take this settlement now, and that's another one in the bag. And it's our first settlement of our third province that we're going to take, because we already have two. We just need to keep our momentum going, keep our army as healthy as possible, and try to defend the settlements we already have while still moving on. Looks like this one's been besieged by somebody else, probably the Skaven. But those are our three final targets. Now, as I said, you'll likely have to defend yourself from the Demons of Chaos, much like I am having to here. They're attacking Castle Alexandrinov, but that's okay. 
Now, I probably wouldn't fight this battle in the open field. They've got too many Furies that will just disrupt all our missiles, and that's a big part of our plan that we need. So we're going to come back and deal with that in a minute. For now, it's okay if they besiege us for a turn or two. I've moved up. I've replenished the rest of my troops now. I'm ready to attack the next settlement here as well, Fort Ostrosk. So that is what we're going to do. Hopefully at this point as well, we should have taken out most of the Druzina army, so there should be very little resistance at this point. It's just a case of going through. I could auto-resolve, but I've got to fight it, otherwise I'm going to lose too many units. But you know the code. They're pretty easy to get through. Just make sure you use your missiles. Occupy this settlement. We've now got two of the four that we need for our final province. And as we can see, the Skaven are actually attacking the third one. So they're doing us a favor. We've got pretty lucky here that they're actually kind of beating the Druzina down and making it easier for us to take them out. We are at war with those Skaven, though. They did declare war on us, so we've got to be a little bit careful around them. They don't have too strong of an army, though. They've mostly got Skaven slaves and clan rats, so nothing to worry about. Now, to the matter of the Demons of Chaos, as long as you've got that palisade built, you should have the big 17 garrison, which is going to help you survive this. But like I said, they've got way too many Furies. It's too hard to try and take them on in the open field. Ideally, we want to get some extra units to support. So we're going to recruit another Lord. And what we're going to do is just recruit him some units as fast as possible and throw him over there. He should be able to get there in time, but if he can't, it's not a big deal. If they attack us and we get to defend it in our settlement with all our towers and stuff, you should be able to win that pretty comfortably, provided you obviously haven't taken too long and let the enemy wear your garrison down too much. So do be aware of how long you're letting the Chaos Demon sit there and besiege your settlement. Now to the matter of the Skaven, what I intended to do here was just run past this settlement and take the other one, the last remaining Druzina settlement other than this one that's being besieged, because then at least they'll be gone. So I'm going to move to the edge of the border, recruit a few more units because there might be some big fights ahead. So good to have the extra units. I've got my other Lord here. He's got those three units now. We're going to recruit him three more just so he's got a nice big force. Recruiting myself a nice witch as well so we can get some magic. Probably, I probably don't need this Kossar hut. I should have got rid of this a while ago, actually. So get rid of the Kossar hut. It's unlikely you're going to recruit anything in this province, right? And there's definitely better stuff you can put there. On to the next turn. I've got pretty lucky here as the Skaven have actually sacked Dushka, which means there's now no garrison there. They've gone home and they've just left me with the free settlement. So easy pickings here. I got pretty lucky. Can't say that this will happen for you, but if you do, nice. It's nice and easy. You just walk in and take it over. Three of the four settlements acquired. One more left and then we'll have our three precious provinces. As for the Demons of Chaos, our second army does arrive in time to reinforce and save our precious besieged settlement and get rid of those damn dirty demons. So we have managed to fend them off and they'll probably just run away now. What can be a better way to do this though is to put the army in that settlement before the demons arrive, right? Try to keep an eye out for them coming, recruit a lord and recruit a few units, then you won't have to do it the way I have. Now when it comes to the last settlement here, there is a bit of an army at Bulgasgrad, but we're going to go ahead and take it on. We will get a valiant defeat apparently if we fight it. They do have a lot of armored Kossars, so it is kind of a tough fight. There is some Sargard in there as well. So what we're going to do is encircle them, and ideally they just will sit in there and we can just beat them down with attrition, or they might come out and fight us, but I think it should be a winnable fight provided you use your missiles and your bear well. In my case, I have got lucky and they have decided to stay sat there, so we are going to be able to wear them down to get a Pyrrhic victory here and take the final settlement. I can't guarantee it'll happen this way for you. Maybe it'll be harder, maybe it'll be easier, but there should be a way for you to get that army dead, maybe bait it out, maybe you can just wear it down with attrition like I did. But once you've got that, we're all good to go. We've now got three provinces secured, Troll Country and the Erengrad province, which is just a single settlement by itself, and the Northern Oblast. And we've managed to get this all done just in time for the first Rifts opening. So now we can go on ahead and get our first soul as well in a few turns. I would advise recruiting a few heroes though to be ready to close some of these Rifts because obviously they can cause a big problem if you leave them there. So get your heroes ready to close them up. And now with the Chaos Realms campaign, this is all we need. We don't need to expand any further. We've got three provinces. We can now win the campaign and win the game with just this. We can upgrade all the settlements as we go, get more money, get more buildings, get better units, and just keep grabbing those souls as the rifts come around. And it should be pretty easy to defend. Keep building those palisades in all the settlements as well, I generally advise. It's just good to have those garrisons all over the place. And just let them defend all your settlements because you can just keep putting your money into making Kostaltin's army better, upgrading your units into higher tier ones, and then you'll have an easier time in those Chaos Realms. Well, that should be it. It should be a pretty plain sailing campaign from here. Keep getting your devotion up. Keep getting your supporters up. You should be on a pretty good path to winning the race here. You can see I'm ahead of Katarin by a fair amount here. We can, of course, use the money and stuff to knock her down a peg if we need to. 
I just keep building those orthodoxy shrines. I think I put two in each province and then maybe just the one in Erengrad as well. And that should probably be enough to help you win that race against Katarin. And then, of course, eventually confederate her, making you even stronger. So that is how you can win one of the hardest campaigns in Total War Warhammer 3. I actually did this on very hard and it was my first campaign. This is the way that I found worked most effectively. But there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.